to be able to reduce that make ready and increase the run speed and at the same time increase quality was just a win-win all the way around. It really was an easy decision to, to move forward with better technology. It goes back to over 100 years ago, to 1915. My grandfather founded a paper company in Hartford, Connecticut, basically just selling paper, craft paper and twine that was used mainly for wrapping in the grocery stores and uh, laundries. That's how it all started. And my dad joined the company in 1945, right after he got out of the service from the Second World War. And over the years, he built it up to be a fairly large distribution company serving the laundries and the dry cleaners with their packaging products, of which some were folding cartons for packaging folded shirts. And so when I came into the business in 1976, as a third generation, I uh, was basically in the distribution end of it, going out selling, because that's primarily you know, how I ended up building the business. We uh, got into manufacturing custom folding cartons in 1978 when I bought a letterpress. It was basically a one color cut miller that I paid $800 for. And uh, from there, you know, we went out and bought an offset press, two color, in 1982. And then our first multicolor, five color Heidelberg we purchased in 1997. Die cutter, our first new piece of equipment that we ever purchased in 1985 was a BOPS 102E, which we're successfully running jobs on up to this day. Absolutely, yeah, no, I, I enjoy, I still, I still even make cold calls, you know, to this day. I hope to have time to do more of that at some point, because that's how I started. I just, used to be you could knock on doors in the old days. You know, the old mills in uh, New Bedford, Fall River, the big textile industry was still vibrant in the 70s, and um, it was a lot of fun. I take pride in knowing everybody's name and wishing him birth happy birthday. I mean, it goes back to my grandfather because my father was very focused on sales and being out. And he said, Melvin, when you come in, the first thing you do when you come in in the morning is you go around and you say hello to every employee. And you still do that? I still do that, yes. It does. We, we, we've got a, a workforce that's cross-trained, that can really move around and, and, and generally speaking, agreeable to understanding extended hours, uh, you know, a weekend shift if, if we need to. And we do have some good partners locally in Hartford and New Haven that can supply us with help as we, as we need it. It's the skilled craftspeople that we really have to hang on to and make sure that we're treating what, right. And I believe we really do. It's a very nice place to work. I don't know if the physical size is becoming much of an asset. Said as, as much as the way that we've really worked together as a team to really capitalize on what we have and move forward. And we do have partners outside where we can store material so we can free up our floor. On average, if you see a pallet on the floor in the morning, it's you're not going to see it in the afternoon. So that's how quick we, we move. It's very important. I mean, we have some, some clients that, that don't need much help at all, but others that need a lot of help. And we focus a lot. We have, for example, our, our, our approval process on medical device. We'll ha run that through four or five of our associates on our team to make sure that everything is just so. And you know, as, the, as the box maker, you know, it's always our obligation to help people uh, from hurting themselves. And in some cases, you, you can never turn away and just say, well, that's how this file was supplied. So we, we don't do that. We really take a lot of initiative, a lot of extra effort to, to, to really help our customers get to the next level with their requests and what they really want. You almost have to anticipate what they want that they're not really telling you exactly what they want. It's harder than most people think. I, I, I would say really on the sales side, it, it really is, a, is, a, is an effort, in some cases monumental. We're so diversified between doing beverage, medical device, pharmaceutical, that I think we have a little bit of advantage that our guys have more of a broader horizon. So we don't look 
to growth for any one particular market, just in general growth. Any profitable business is good business. It influences our decision. Now we're fortunate to have a, a couple of digital partners that we've that we've worked with both locally and um, West Coast, Southern US as well. So we've done a real good job learning from them and we in fact will hand out smaller projects, pilot projects. So we're kind of getting our feet wet with it. And I would say at some point, you know, once the technology really evolves to where you can run a decent sized sheet, that, that we, would, uh, we would adopt that as a, as a supplementary, but offset always being the primary source. And some of our customers are very unsophisticated where, where they really want to hand you a paper PO and hand deliver it, and others others are much more in line with, uh, with a digital workflow. We have clients that don't want hard proofs anymore. You know, we're doing everything electronic PDF, and it, it, it definitely moves things faster, but it's really adapting to what the customer wants. And I think that's for a shop our size, that really is a strong point for us that we don't really like to say no. It is correct, and, and that is a great point because that's one marketplace that we we can do a better job. Now that we have the man rolling with the, with these better capabilities, we have eight colors now versus six, so that opens up the field for us, and that's going to be a big push in, in 2023 that we really go after more value-added packaging, cold foil, windowing. You know, we have those capabilities, so and we, we don't utilize them as well as we, we possibly could. Right now, we have a few clients that are, I, I would say, small to medium, and we do now, we have the samples, we have the portfolio, we have some success, so now it's just a matter of saying, hey, let's, let's really push this and make it an, an, an agenda, and we will, that is an agenda for 2023, for sure. I would say these last investments that we made with both both printing presses, one one in place, one coming, it's a it's a significant investment. But you know, when we, we look at it, we look at the profitability of the company. You know, where do we think we can we we can grow? Uh, the amount of associates that we have on um, payroll is something that I'm I'm always all over. You know, we like a nice labor to sales ratio to be solid, and we're 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 comfortable and confident that we've made uh, the right moves. I would say the next step was we move into die cutting, and and we we will uh, acquire or a die cutter, but you know, we really have to get through 2023 and, and then um, you know, see where we stand after that. Very much. Turnaround time is, uh, it, that really is our niche and that's what separates us, I would say, but from some of our larger competitors. We will do whatever we have to do to, uh, to, to manipulate our schedule efficiently and, and really we have a workforce that will step up to the challenge. My biggest thing that I do is I will communicate constantly with the workforce. If we may have a meeting after lunch, shut everything down. Let's talk about these challenges that we have coming up. Can we work Saturdays? Uh, we split shifts, 12 hour days and that's how we really manage it as really as a team. We have a lot of small runs and sometimes that's intentional, but mostly it's driven by the customer that doesn't want to hold a lot of inventory. And as, which is one of the reasons why we leaped into a different technology with offset printing to be able to handle that demand efficiently and keep waste down. We really focused on um, color control, um, quick make readies. Everybody has a fast machine now, that's a fact. But it was really, how do we reduce our make ready as low as possible, but still you know, maintain the integrity that we've been looking for and our customers have come to expect. That was really uh, the challenge when we were deciding which machine to go with. We really had higher waste, slower make ready, slower run speeds. To be able to reduce that make ready and increase the run speed and at the same time increase quality, was just a win-win all the way around. It really was an easy decision to, to move forward with better technology. It was very difficult. We analyzed all. Um, Man Roland, I will say, um, they really did us right with pricing. So they were very competitive on the price side, but that didn't sell me. It was really 
uh, the, the device that they call the Color Pilot and, and testimonial. So even though we were in a pandemic, I personally visited several Manrolin installs and really got to talk with the operators. Not necessarily the management, not that that's important, but I, I like to work from the ground level up. So talking to the people that are running the equipment, that's really what sold me. And then the fact that Manrolin has backed up. And coming up through the trade, when I was a young man, I ran Manrolin printing equipment, I've run Heidelberg printing equipment. So I am a craftsperson before I'm a, a manager. When you're running cold foil, you lose two printing units. So we did have a machine that was six color in cold foil, so really all we could do is four color process with cold foil. This opens up the field a little bit more. Also, a lot of the clients in our space uh, use Pantone colors, and, and now we could run more Pantone colors along with four color process. So it really made us more efficient as far as creating layouts and, and items like that. The second machine, we didn't commit to right away, to be honest with you. We wanted to see what the first machine can do and, and work with the man rolling team. And uh, you know we, we've been uh, we've been very uh, happy with that. I mean, startups are startups. There's always bumps in the road, but it's how you react to those situations. And Man Roland has been um, really a great partner reacting to you know some of the stub toes that we've got along the way. No, it's not too early to say the investment is very uh, profitable. We are putting out more work with one Man Roland machine than we were with the two machines that we that we had prior to. You know, the, the uh, whole goal is to continue growing, continue investing in the business, investing in people. We'd love to see the company double over the next few years. We want to take Keystone to the next level where we can effectively double our business and then move on from there um, with growth. We see a lot of growth opportunity. Um, and now that we have a full complement for offset printing, it should be no reason to hold back. Yeah.